We're going to take you to the edge of space, where the sky gets darker, where you can see the curvature of the Earth. We're going to travel across the Atlantic at twice the speed of sound, faster than a rifle bullet, 23 miles every minute. We're going to travel so fast, we're moving faster than the Earth rotates. And the world will be watching us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us to celebrate the British Airways flagship, Concorde. Concord video. Uh, you've just been listening to Mike Bannister, former chief pilot of Concord for British Airways during his final press conference uh, when Concord took its last flight in 2003 from New York Kennedy back to London Heathrow. Uh, I thought it'd be an interesting exercise to make a video of uh, how I fly Concord on Flight Simulator and I thought it'd be a fairly easy project and uh, maybe would be a 45 minute video. It turned out to be a lot more intense and complicated than I originally planned but um, I wanted to do it thoroughly and I wanted to add various features throughout the uh, the process. Um, I filmed the flights uh, over three complete flights that I took from New York to Heathrow on the VATSIM network in February and early March of 2013 and edited all the pieces together for this particular video. Um, I have uh, a couple of disclaimers I, I should point out. Number one, I'm not a, a licensed pilot. Number two, I'm certainly not a Concorde pilot. And so there are uh, bound to be some omissions, errors, and various uh, things I say and do during the uh, the video that are not 100% correct, but I do have a reasonable level of competence in flying the aircraft, and uh, hopefully somebody out there will learn a thing or two uh, by watching this uh, video. One last thing, if you look below, I've put in a lot of links, number one to chapters, uh, various parts of the video. I hope you watch the whole thing, but it is pretty long, so if you want to skip around to chapters and uh, find that easier, the chapters are below. I've also put a number of links to um, either interesting things I've found about Concord that you may want to look at, and also additional resources that you can utilize um, if you want to learn how to fly the aircraft using Flight Simulator X and Flight Sim Labs Concord X program. I particularly recommend the ITVV videos uh, that were filmed a number of years ago. Uh, it's a four-hour video that goes step-by-step step through how the real crew flies Concorde, and it gives you tremendous insight into flying the virtual aircraft. So with that said, let's uh, head on to our initial part of the video where we get into the flight plan, uh, working out our fuel, weight, and balance. Thanks for watching. We're looking down at uh, Concorde parked at gate number two, uh, terminal seven at John F. Kennedy Airport. Uh, services are ongoing as they prepare the aircraft for our morning departure. And as uh, the ground crew gets the aircraft ready, we're gonna head down into the pilot uh, flight planning area and we're gonna plan our flight for the day. So. Our Concorde flight today is from New York to London Heathrow. We're going to be flying the traditional Concorde route, which is over uh, the Atlantic Ocean, over track, uh, NAT track, Sierra November. And we'll be uh, decelerating before we hit land in England and then uh, descending to south of the Heathrow Airport and then being vectored in for landing uh, in London. So here's our flight plan. You can see all of the waypoints uh, pointed out so we can program our inertial navigation system. Uh, all of the parameters are listed as to when we can and cannot um, 
be supersonic so we can uh, use this plan in correctly flying the aircraft. Our flight today is covering a distance of almost 3,200 nautical miles and with an estimated time uh, pushed back to at the gate in London of 3 hours and 16 minutes. We're departing at 1345 Zulu which is 745 a.m. local time here in New York and uh, expecting to land at uh, 1725 Zulu uh, or 1725 local time at Heathrow as we are flying Eastern Standard Time. So with that said it's time to move on to the next part of our planning which is our weight and balance and fuel calculations. Alright so what I'm showing here are all of the uh, graphs and charts that uh, pilots would use or particularly the flight engineer would use to work out the weight and balance all of the takeoff and engine parameters etc for the Concorde flights. Uh, to do this manually is a tremendous amount of work it probably is a good half an hour to put together the various numbers that are required to fill out the takeoff form and it's really not something that um, as a virtual pilot you want to be doing on every flight. So thankfully the uh, team at uh, Concord X has put together uh, a, an automatic um, system to do the calculations for us on the most common routes and that's what we're going to use now for our flight from New York to London. Okay so we're going to begin by setting our fuel load. We're going to be using the default load. So the first thing we do is we need to select <coughs> our route in the program. So we're selecting the New York to London city pair. And once we do that, the program automatically loads the proper fuel amount for the default load. We're going to add a thousand extra kilos of fuel just because on this video I expect a bit more time on the ground. So I'm going to burn a bit more fuel. So we've added uh, that extra uh, fuel now. And then once we've done that, we can move over to the aircraft load. We can see our zero fuel weight center of gravity, our, all of our uh, zero fuel weight fuel, total weight, and we can see where the aircraft uh, center of gravity lies um, at startup. We'll have to make an adjustment on the aircraft panel to account for the fact that the center of gravity is beyond the aft limit. And now that we have all this information uh, written down um, and taken, taken note of it, the next thing we do is we work out our takeoff data. We're selecting the runway at New York 31 left. I've selected a takeoff CG of 54% and I'm estimating a taxi time of 12 minutes. Uh, a little longer than normal but again with the video I added some extra time. And then we go to the takeoff form which has been completely populated with all the correct numbers for our flight to New York so it has our takeoff speeds uh, indication of if we have an engine failure whether it's a stop or go and uh, the angle at which we'll take off and we'll hit the send button and all of that data will end up going over to Concord all the engine parameters and all the the uh, speed bugs will be set automatically for us which saves a tremendous amount of time and is a, a great tool for us. And just one last thing before we head into the aircraft to begin our flight. I'm just uh, showing you the checklist that I'll be using. This is an example of the checklist that was provided by uh, Flight Sim Labs in the software. I'll have a link below to a publicly available normal uh, checklist for Concord in case you'd like to look at it uh, and follow along as you're going through this particular video. So with that said let's head over to the aircraft and begin our preliminary checklist and begin our flight. Alright so what we're doing is we're looking uh, from the back of our cockpit uh, on the right hand side we have the engineers station and the engineers uh, panel uh, the overhead, the pedestal, captain and uh, first officer panels. The, f uh, c the panel for the engineer is actually not a live virtual cockpit panel uh, because of some programming issues that uh, resulted. So they're all 2D pop-ups so we're going to be using these uh, 2D pop-ups from the engineer station uh, to go through our 
entire flight. Now, the way I generally do it is I don't I don't come over here and click on this stuff. I actually use a small pop-up that Flight Sim Labs has put in. If I push a button on my on my yoke, um, I have access to the entire panel. So that's what I'll be using in making my selections. So with that, we're going to go over to the captain's panel. Uh, everything's dark. The Concorde did not come with uh, a built-in auxiliary power unit or APU. The reason was to save weight. The aircraft is extremely, uh, extremely inefficient at subsonic speeds. So every pound counts in, in effect. So uh, they removed the uh, APU as a result, and uh, we are going to now regress, request ground power. So. Uh, we're going to go to our ground services and we're going to request ground power and we're going to need ground air as well in order to start our engines. So with that, I'll get rid of the menu and now we can bring up our electrical generating control panel and begin our flight. Now there is a safety checklist that we need to go through first. Um, there's really not much to do on the safety checklist in Flight Simulator, so um, I usually skip over it, but for completeness on this flight, I will go through it quickly. Uh, the ground service switch is on, uh, boarding, racking, roof area lights, those are on. I'll just quickly double check that. Um, actually, they're not on, so I will quickly turn those on. Uh, landing gear, standby, uh, lowering gear is guarded. The transponder, uh, it's not on it's on standby, but it's turned off at the moment. <coughs> uh, landing gear is down. Gear override is guarded. Nose and visor are up and locked. Auto ignition is off. Engine probe heaters are off. Wing intake ice, icing test, that's off, although that's not simulated. Forward fuel forward transfer switch is guarded, the trim transfer auto master switch that's off and guarded, tank 11 inlets are set to off, uh, standby inlets are shut, trim pipe drain switch is shut, the jettison panel is cover that's closed, the ram air turbine switch that's guarded, windshield emergency DI switch is off and guarded and the circuit breakers not simulated but they are set. So now we're ready to go to our preliminary cockpit uh, checklist. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, turn on the power and then the second thing we need to do is to make sure the uh, the e equipment cooling is going otherwise the whole system will shut down very quickly and I believe that's already on uh, so equipment cooling is up here and that's already turned on. So we are now uh, good to go. Uh, we're not going to uh, run out of uh, power because of that. Uh, the next thing is I need to just kind of look down here at our center panel and turn on the um, turn on the air data computers which I'll do now and then the next thing is we absolutely must um, get rid of that annoying beeping sound or bu uh, gong sound which will just drive us insane for the flight. So I'll click over here and turn that off. That just kind of uh, turns off the the gong while we go through our uh, checklist. So the next thing is uh, we have to turn on our INS system. So I'll bring up our INSs. Uh, here are the three INS panels uh, over here. We have to get these started. Uh, they are already in standby mode, but I'm going to double check that by clicking on uh, this panel down here and we can see that uh, it's set to a standby, standby and standby. So that's uh, that's all good. Um, I can now turn that off and the next thing I need to do is I need to update the position of the INS's. So this is INS system is how the Concorde uh, navigates and it basically is a system whereby you program in the latitude and longitude of your waypoints that you want to go to and uh, once you've done that uh, the Concorde uh, computers follow that navigation path and uh, takes you to your destination. The downside of the whole business is that um, there's no nice magenta line to follow and uh, you really do need to check the system to make sure that um, 
you've programmed it correctly or you'll end up going completely off course. So the first thing I'm going to do is update our current position. Now, normally what you do is you put on Control, uh, sorry, Shift Z to bring up our latitude and longitude to where we are. And then we're going to go, we're going to insert our new position. We're going to click North. And we're at 40390. Uh, we'll insert that. And West 073471. And insert. And then we need to do that to this unit over here. North 40390. Insert. West. 073471 insert and you'll notice here that we've got a warning uh, it's actually a, uh, an, an important warning because normally when that happens your systems are not going to work properly the reason we have the warning is because our initial position or the, the location of our last position was actually at London Heathrow and we've reset our position now so uh, it's telling us that we're actually uh, far too far away from our last position, which makes sense in the real world because the Concorde isn't just going to go from London to JFK without actually physically moving. But in the flight simulator world, you end up with this problem. So I'm just going to clear that by clicking the test button a few times. That'll have that go away. And we'll just do our last unit, uh, north 40390. Oh, I made a mistake there. Uh, north four zero three nine zero insert and zero seven three four seven one insert and that's also going to come up with a warning wow what happened there i made a mistake again hold on uh that's west let me start over made a big mistake north four zero three nine zero insert west Zero seven three four seven one insert. That's better. And now I've cleared my warning. So then what we have to do in the process, we're going to bring up our engine engine start panel and we're going to switch these units over to align. It takes about ten minutes to align, and while it starts aligning, we will be doing all of our other checklists um, but before I do that we really need to input our flight plan and uh, today we're going to load flight plan segment number 54 and I'll uh, from our previous discussion you know all about what that means so I'm going to just uh, load that in now and uh, once I've got that in I'll do a quick check and then uh, off we go we can close this down and begin the rest of our setup so it's flight plan segment 54 I'm loading it. I've actually put this remote sign in here, and the reason I did that was so that all three units load the same thing, and they've read it now. And then I'm going to come over to this unit here, and I'm just going to double check that the distances make sense. That's my check step to make sure I haven't entered anything wrong. So I'm going to go waypoint change 5 to 6. It's 35 miles, which is what I'm expecting. 6 to 7 is 55 miles. Then I'm expecting 162 and then 66, then 353, 345. Oh, that's, uh, that's because I need to enter at this point a brand new card. So we're all set, everything's good, and we'll put our first segment in a zero, 0 to 5, which um, is our distance to our first waypoint. And I'll do it on all the units. I can take off our remote now, and uh, actually I forgot one thing. I need to actually load in um, on this unit here. I need to load in the the um, waypoints which we use to uh, realign the system um, and keep it uh, keep it coordinated so that uh, we're getting good navigation. The system tends to uh, go go off course or not off course it, the error rate uh, increases over time so we have to align it with um, fixed waypoints 
and uh, this is the way we do it. So I'm just going to add those in and I need to load catalog 91 uh, today in order to be able to do my alignment, uh, which we do mid-flight. Uh, so we're going to go to 91 and I'm going to load that in. Actually, I don't even need this, these other systems when I do this. I'll just load it in on this one alone. Otherwise, I'll create a problem for myself. <coughs> okay, so that's done. And now I can get out of this and go back to 05. And I'm just going to put this in. Um, that's the distance. And this one at the bottom, I'm just going to put it onto uh, the status. And it's going to tell me how it's going, getting, a, getting on in terms of alignment. And this will be the distance of this one. All right, so now I'm going to close these down and we can now do our preliminary cockpit checklist. Our technical log has been checked, our ground power has been uh, turned on, our equipment bay cooling is set, oxygen panel has been set, the drain master heat, uh, that was one thing I haven't set yet, so I'm going to do that, it's a cool day, below 10 degrees, so I'm going to turn the drain masters on. Uh, the air data computer is on, the INS is aligned, uh, tested, present position and uh, route has been loaded, and it's now just in the alignment uh, phase. Um, and I do need to turn our transponders, turn this up, I need to actually turn the transponder on, and it's on standby. So um, that's done. Our emergency check equipment, uh, we'll call that checked, and our documentation is checked. So now we are ready to go to the before start checklist. Okay, well I've noticed now that the, um, the alignment process on the INS is actually completed. So I'm bringing up my engineer's panel here, and uh, I've uh, actually turned all of the switches uh, we've turned them to a line and now we're just going to turn them to nav, which is um, the process by which these uh, INS units are now able to navigate. So that's uh, now completed and we'll continue on now with our before start checklist. So the uh, master CBs have been checked. Uh, the cockpit inspection security is complete. Oxygen is checked 100%. Those are things that are only uh, available in the real world, not uh, in our flight simulator. Um, our windows uh, in the virtual cockpit are closed. And now we can begin to continue on with the rest of our process. So the flight inverters, we're going to turn those on, our anti-stall units, we're going to turn uh, those on, our navigation is set to uh, radial or radio, um, our instrument uh, transfer switches which are here all set to the captain's side, our transponder, um, we've turned it on and uh, we just need to do our test which I haven't done yet so I'll just uh, click the button and we should get a pass very shortly, um, which we have now. So that TCAS system test okay. the signal now, so that's done. The brakes are on and checked. The throttle masters need to be turned on. That's on the overhead and we do that. That's now turned to main. Ground hydraulic checkout yellow, yellow and off. So that's completed. The fuel heaters need to be switched on, so we're going to turn all the fuel heaters on. The engine recirculation valves, they are shut. The secondary air doors, they are shut. And just a second while I turn off, the that thing comes on once in a while. I've got to turn that off. Um, the batteries now need to be turned on. That's a little bit unusual for an aircraft to have the batteries turned on so late in the process, but we're now turning on the batteries. And our INS uh, system ha is now in uh, mixed navigation mode. That's now completed. Our ASI pitch index and reheat uh, placards, they are set. 
fuel flow P7 bugs that was that's all set already the clock and TLA bugs that's set we're gonna have our reheat on for one minute and two seconds before turning it off our seatbelt sign should be uh, turned on let me just uh, get that going and our no smoking sign should be on uh, our briefing we stated that previously our emergencies uh, reviewed our load sheet has been checked uh, we now need to set up the fuel panel for our weights so the panel is uh, basically turned off at this point so I'm just gonna set it up uh, all of the stuff here goes to auto auto these pumps are auto these we turn on these remain off this uh, these are in the wing tips 7 5a and 7a is wing tips they'll get moved into uh, 5 and 7 uh, once we're climbing um, turning on the 5 and 7 pumps these pumps remain off these guys go into auto I'll keep actually you know what um, I'm gonna keep these guys shut because when we begin our fuel transfer we're going to transfer from tanks 9 and 10 down here into tank 11 and we're going to want to have the fuel moving backwards without going into the uh, the other tanks initially so I'll move that uh, these guys all need to be set to auto the hydraulic pumps auto the D air on I'll put the D air on here uh, we need to move our fuel load limit up to 10,500 which I'm gonna do right now so kinda set it up in advance for our fuel flow as we climb out uh, we can put the engine feed pumps on we'll turn the other guys on later and now our fuel panel is set now here is the um, here are the weights I just need to uh, make sure the weights are set properly uh, 88.4 zero fuel weight um, and 52.5 is our zero fuel weight and I've previously set that so now we will set our uh, aircraft weight uh, hold on here there we go oops I went to the wrong one um, and our weight which we wrote down earlier is 88.4 Eight. The other one's already at eight, and uh, this one's going to have to go to four, and the next one goes to zero. So we've got that guy set, and then we'll get our fuel. Our fuel is eighty-nine point five nine today. Oops. Eighty-nine. Fifty-nine. that back to normal and our fuel panel is set and uh, I wrote down that our total weight is 177990 which corresponds to this so we're we're all good so our fuel panel is uh, now set up and now we can obtain our start clearance uh, and uh, we can be on our le on our way so first thing I'm going to do is just go up here I'm going to turn on our nav light we should have done earlier anti-collision light is on I'm going to go to our engineers panel and just test that all the doors are locked which they are that's good and um, our throttles are on idle you can see that they're down to idle uh, our engine feed pumps are on we've only got the four of them on but they're on the flight deck door now needs to be locked so we've now locked the flight deck door and we're going to gain our clearance to start so the uh, before start checklist is now complete New York uh, Kennedy Tower Speedbird Concorde 2 we're Terminal 7 requesting IFR to Heathrow uh, Concorde 2 giving information in the current one of the Heathrow Airport via the Kennedy 1 departure right over Intersection in the file. Check flight level 6010 minutes after departure. Squawk 512. Uh, Roger, clear to London Heathrow. Uh, the Kennedy 1 departure, Canarsie Climb Vector ship. 
Expect flight level 600, 10 minutes after departure. Squawk 6512, Speedbird Concord 2. Squawk Roger, correction. Squawk 1512. Uh, Roger, push at our discretion. We'll call for taxi. We'll hold short of uh, Alpha, Speedbird Concord 2. Okay, so now um, we're ready for our uh, startup. We are keeping in mind that our uh, Concorde does not have an APU. Normally a jet is pushed back and we start using APU power and air, but uh, because we are using ground power and air, we actually have to start uh, engines uh, right here at the gate. So we're going to start engines two and three um, first. So the first thing we need to do in order to get our start working properly is we actually have to um, turn our engine idle onto high. Um, uh, so that way when we start up we can use the bleed air for the other engines. Uh, we're going to turn on our generator switches and I might be doing this slightly out of order. I'm actually turning on my hydraulic switches as well first um, and uh, the generator switches just to kind of get that out of the way. And then we're going to go to our engine start panel. We need to um, turn the Debo switches on. Uh, although we'll not be doing a Debo start today because the uh, Concorde's been sitting here overnight. Uh, we only do that if it's less than five hours. And now we're going to light up number... We're going to light up number three. And we can see the valve is opening. I'm just going to close that so we can start to see here the... <coughs> um, we can start to see here that the and 2 is beginning to turn and now as it gets to 12 we need to go upstairs here and flip on our switch okay and now that it's stabilized we can flip off the Debo and then the engine will run up and there it goes and now we can start number Two. So we're going to flip that to start. Oh, we're getting ah. the warnings on the engine start, which is normal. We're getting to number uh, 12. I'm just going to look up again and flip on the, the fuel. Oh. And then i got to turn off the Debo switch at 25% which I've done now and the engine will run up. Okay, so now that we have our engines started, we're going to start engines one and four after pushback. And in order to do that, we're going to do what's called a cross bleed start. So we're going to use the bleed air from engines two and three to start number one and four. But before we do that, we need to disconnect our ground power. So I'm just going to do a goes on, I mean it goes off, then we will know that our, uh, we'll know that our ground services have been disconnected and we can safely push back. Um, so I'm going to release the brake. Uh, I have it hooked up to my uh, a switch on my yoke, so I don't have to look down to do it. I'll just release the brake, which I've done now. And uh, it's commencing pushback, and it's saying clear to start remaining engines. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, first thing we need to do is bring up our bleed control panel. We're going to open the bleed switches on all the engines. We're going to open our cross bleeds right here. We're going to be leaving the condition valves closed for now. And now we can go ahead and uh, start the remaining two engines. Uh, so we'll start number four first. Same process as before. Wait for the um, engines to N1 to run up to 12% and then open up the fuel. that'll start up and then uh, I'll 
start number one as well at this point. And now I'm just setting up my panel, which I should have done earlier, but I was, I guess, preoccupied. So I'm just setting up my panel now for the taxi and for, uh, for our takeoff to be. Okay, we've started our engines up, so now it's time to deal with the after start checklist. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, engage our, our stab and feel, which is uh, the electric control of uh, the aircraft of our rudders and pedals etc. Uh, en engine anti-ice is not uh, required today. Uh, our brake fans we need to uh, make sure those are on to keep the brakes cool while we um, taxi around the airport. Um, our idle switches need to go back to low and we've tested our door warnings um, so that's uh, all good. The engine feed pumps at this point need to be all on, so I'm just going to uh, turn all those on now. So all our engine feed pumps are working properly and engaged. Our hydraulics are on and checked. And uh, there's a ground bypass that needs to be uh, turned on, so that's checked, ground bypass. The ground equipment is clear, so the after start checklist is complete. Uh, I'm just going to finish that off. It's not a checklist item, I'm just going to finish off at the uh, air bleed control. We don't need our cross bleeds now, we can put our conditioned valves on. So that's now set as well. Okay, so now we're all set up. We just have to uh, begin our taxi, and while we're taxiing, we'll be completing the taxi checklist. Now, this is where the real world and the flight simulator world, simulator world ends up diverging a little bit. The reality is, if you try to do this checklist, or at least if I try to do this checklist while I'm taxiing, I end up taxiing off the taxiway, which uh, isn't a good idea. So I'm going to end up completing this checklist now while I'm held up here at the gate, parked, and then we'll... Uh, take our leisurely taxi over to runway 31 left. So first thing we're going to do is lower the nose and visor um, and I have a, uh, a setup on my um, on my uh, on my yoke uh, sorry my uh, th throttle quad which somehow today is not working right so I'm just going to do that manually and move that uh, down and five degrees. The brakes are checked and uh, they are normal. If I engage the brakes, you'll see the uh, the brake uh, indicators go to normal. I'll re-engage the brakes. Um, flight instruments are checked. There are no flags. We now have to set up the trims for the aircraft. Um, the Concorde takes off at minus two and a half uh, nose down, so I'll just move that down to two and a half nose down, which is about there. I can check it exactly, but it really doesn't matter. So uh, that's right there is fine. Um, we do have to indicate our track distance to London, and that's in this uh, distance to go box so that the passengers in the back can actually see how far it is to go. So we'll crank that up to 3,185 uh, miles. That's 3,185 nautical miles, not not uh, track mile or re regular miles, I guess. So um, 3,000. Oh, I've gone way too far there while I was talking. Three. 
3, 1, it rounds off to the nearest 10, so I'll run it off to 90, and then we have to um, change it to uh, normal miles. Uh, so we'll click that, it's 3,670, and boom, we're all set to go. So that's completed now. Uh, the CG movement uh, will have to go back as required. That's actually set, so we don't really need to do anything with that. Uh, we ne need to turn on our auto ignition switches, which is on now. Uh, we need to inhibit our probe heaters, so inhibit off inhibit. Our pressure static heaters need to go on. Um, and we need to engage our elevons and rudder. So that's all good. Our engine is set for takeoff and climb, and all our other uh, items are set properly. So we can turn that off. So our uh, and now for our limits, uh, we're still at the limit, and the light is on. So I'm going to have to go to this panel here, our engine control schedule, and turn this uh, little thing here off to takeoff of 54%. And you'll see that it's moved the back marker down a bit probably easier to see on um, the fuel panel. So you can see it's moved the back marker down a bit and now we're we're not going to cause a problem. So that's good to go. Um, our engine control schedule is checked. I just turned that right now to fly over uh, the engine limiter. We're going to check, move that to 88%. And what happens is it limits the fourth engine to 88% for a, a short period of time on the takeoff roll because of vibration that it was creating um, if all engines power up to full power on the takeoff roll. Uh, our air conditioning needs to be set up and checked, uh, so I'll set through that now. We're just going to turn the A button to about 5 and a bit, and that will uh, keep the air pressure controlled during our climb. And our fuel uh, LP fuel prote protection needs to be armed. So that is now completed. Our anti-skid lights, uh, which are down here, they're off. I should have just mentioned when I when I turned on the um, sorry, uh, when I turned on all of the uh, electronic trim, artificial trim, the uh, elevons, uh, rudder, all of these systems, that's our blue system, and we can see here that all our blue system is engaged. If one of these was off, for example, if I just turn this one off, um, let me just turn this off, you'll see it's gone to green, and now it's red. So we've got to make sure these are all on, and they are, so that is all set. Um, our main transfer pumps there as required. The taxi checklist is now complete. We're going to do just a final check uh, here uh, before we complete our taxi checklist. I need to turn on the visor uh, de-ice and the de-mist, uh, de that's on. And then this panel here is for our reverse ASOV test, which uh, tests our uh, reverse bucket. So we need to rotate the nozzles over to E for the test. We put the nozzle override to test, and then we uh, observe this is flashing. We push our throttle to mid range and we observe that our um, our N1 doesn't go up more than 6 degrees, which it didn't, and then we put our, our uh, reverses on and uh, when we have the reverses on we um, we observe the buckets continue to uh, flash and to uh, increases to reverse idle and uh, when we cancel the reverse, the buckets to return to normal, which they do. And uh, the reverse lights extinguish, which now they're just, let me see if they do that. So they're just going back to flashing. So I believe that's a correct test. So now we just flip this back to normal. It's not a test I do every time, but uh, for this video, I am going ahead and completing this test.
Kennedy Tower, Speedbird Concord 2, we're holding short of Alpha, uh, ready for taxi. Speedbird 2, Speedbird Con, we have the runway 31 left, taxi, hold off, correct this runway 4 left, move. Oh, I see Alpha Golf cross four left. Continue on Zulu. Hold short three one left. Speedbird Concord two. Canarsie climb. Basically, that's a left turn over uh, after runway 31 left, heading towards the Canarsie VOR. You want to uh, go by the Canarsie VOR to the east of it and then pick up the 176 radial of the Canarsie VOR. The only other issue is on the Kennedy 253 radial. When we cross that point, we want to be above 2,500 feet. So Showing you here on the Google map, we're going to be going down runway 31 left, making our left turn around Jamaica Bay, and looking for the Canarsie VOR, uh, go past it on the east, then over Floyd Bennett Field, and then we're going to be looking for the parking lot at Rockaway Beach, which uh, is that red dot, and we'll be going over the parking lot and then out into the Atlantic where we will continue on our route. So this is the Canarsie climb. Okay, so we're holding short of runway 31 left and I'm just uh, about to go through my before takeoff checklist and then contact the tower to advise I'm holding short and ready to go. Uh, before I go ahead and do that, just wanted to explain that uh, I'm acting as a three-man crew. Um, I don't have a first officer and I don't have a flight engineer. I'm also flying on VATSIM with live ATC, so there's frequencies to change. So there's a lot of work to be done as you hand fly the aircraft through the departure. And it's uh, not ideal. It invariably results in you taking your eyes away from the instruments and away from visually what you're doing. And invariably your pitch and bank angle can change and speeds can get out of whack. So um, that's just uh, the way it is with flying with a one-man crew. So with that said, I'll go through my before takeoff checklist and then we'll contact the tower advisor ready to go and do our takeoff. Uh, the briefing is done, takeoff data has been updated, the cabin crew has been called, our landing lights, we turn those on. Um, the transponder is set, uh, we just need to uh, turn, it, turn our transponder on, so that is set now. Uh, the wheel overheat lights uh, they are off, I believe. Yes, they are. The brake fans are off. Our takeoff monitor is armed. Our reheats, we'll turn those on. And uh, our nozzle override is off. Pitch index is checked. That is correct. Brake fans, uh, we talked about that already. And uh, the only thing is the recall of master warning and then inhibit. So the takeoff checklist is now complete. Uh, Kennedy Tower, Speedbird Concord 2, holding short 3 1 left. We're ready to go. Speedbird Concord 2 F3, Canarsie Climb with 3 1 3, runway 3 1 left, clear for takeoff. Roger, clear for takeoff, 3 1 left, Canarsie Climb, Speedbird Concord 2. begin our takeoff roll with the traditional Concorde call out which is 321 now. On 3 we will turn on our uh, clock and on now we will simultaneously hit our uh, countdown timer for our reheats and slam the throttle full forward. So here we go. Three. Two, one, now.
rotate. We pull back to the predetermined pitch index. V2. Positive climb. Gear up. Turn. Reheats off, throttles back to the TLA bug, and begin the after takeoff flow. Two forty knots. Beaver Concord two. Left turn for the Gunnarsson climb. Gun park the ball. Roger one three five point nine. Roger over to uh, the Kennedy departure one three five point nine. Beaver Concord two. At 235 degrees, reduce the bank angle to 7.5%, full throttles and increase the pitch to 19% to maintain speed. Kennedy departure, speedbird Concord 2, climbing through 1500 in the Canarsa climb. Roger, cl uh, turn left heading 130, climb maintain 7000, speedbird Concord 2. Our bank angle is seven and a half degrees, maintaining 250 knots. We're looking for the uh, 253 radial. We're waiting for the yellow line to start coming down, which it's doing now. So we're going to uh, do our second 321 noise and back our throttles to our TLA bug. And we're looking now for the Canarsie 176 radial, but we've already been given the turn to 130 degrees. So we bank over to 25% again and head over to the 130 radial, all the while maintaining 250 knots. Two, two, five, eight, eight, two, that. Roger, climb maintain 1 2000, speed recovery. Okay, wings are level now, still hand flying the aircraft, looking for the call, the instruction direct ship. At 5 DME from the Canarsie VOR, we're putting the throttles forward to full dry power. ship. Roger, direct ship, speed recovery. Okay, bringing up our INSs, putting in direct ship. We're still hand flying the aircraft, but switching over to INS for lateral guidance. Okay, so it's time to do our after takeoff checklist. The landing gear are up, lights off, and neutral. The landing lights are on still. They'll remain on until 10,000 feet. Our master warning has been recalled. Our ADS and standby heaters are on. The engine rating mode is flight. Pressurization was checked. The secondary air doors open, lights off. The nose and visor is now up and locked. Our after takeoff checklist is complete. And now we've done enough hand flying, so I'm turning on our uh, autopilot uh, and instructing it to follow the INS and to maintain our current speed of approximately. 270 knots and uh, climb up to our prescribed altitude of uh, 12,000 feet. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is there a time for contact the uh, Central one two five point? Uh, Roger, over to New York Center, 125.32, Speedboat Concord 2, good night. New York Center, Speedboat Concord 2, 11,000 feet. Altitude of the 1,000. Speedboat Concord 2, climb and take level 2, 3. Climb and take flight level 2, 3, 0, Speedboat Concord 2. As we pass 10,000 feet, we're going to be using our vertical speed control to slowly increase the speed all the way up to either 390 knots if we have a subsonic leg or uh, at around 390, 400, close to the barber pole, we will engage the max climb button and the aircraft will climb at our maximum speed all the way up to Mach 2.0. Uh, we from airspace view of the radar control of the line was terminated J2 advisory frequency. Roger, change to advisory frequency. Have a good morning. Speedbird Concord 2. Okay, we're heading towards Mach 0 0.7, so it's time now for our climb checklist. Our altimeters are set. The fuel transfer, we'll move that back to aft. The takeoff CG switch is normal. The brake fans are off. Our engine control schedule is normal. Taxi turn lights are off. Nozzle override lights are off. Our seat belt sign will turn that off. Our secondary air door switches are open and we can see here that the nozzles are modulating, they're closing down, uh, getting closer to zero. So our climb checklist is now complete. All right, well, we're approaching that very unique part of the Concorde flight where Concorde separates itself from all other passenger aircraft and that we're going to be breaking the speed of sound, uh, the sound barrier, uh, very shortly. We're at uh, Mach decimal 95, so it's time for our transonic checklist. So we're going to check, first of all, the auxiliary inlets are shut, which they are. Um, our secondary nozzles are less than 15%. There's 20 at the top of the circle, 15, and they're at about 9%, so that's okay. We're going to turn our reheats on the inner pair first, and the inner engines uh, 2 and 3, and then the uh, reheats on engines 1 and 4. And we're going to confirm that our fuel transfer is going backwards. It's aft, and that is the case. The fuel transfer is backwards, is going back. Uh, to the aft of the aircraft, so the transonic, transonic checklist is now complete. So we're just going to wait until we go through the speed of sound, which we're going through right now. And you can see the gauges flicker up and down, and now that we're through the speed of sound, the temperature on the skin of the aircraft begins to heat up quite rapidly, so we don't need our heaters anymore. So we'll turn off our pressure static heaters, our visor de-ice and our visor de-mist and uh, the wing anti-ice which wasn't on anyway so our checklist at Mach 1 is now complete okay so our fuel transfer back into tank 11 is now completed there's 10,500 kilos in tank 11 so we're just setting up our fuel panel so that the fuel continues to transfer into tanks 5 and 7 so I've got the uh, inlets for tank 5 and 7 set to auto and fuel will continue to go into tank 5 and 7 until the transfer is complete. Passing through Mach 1.3 we need to check our intakes. Um, you can see on engines 3 and 4, the uh, first two gauges in those two engines, the ramps have started to come down. 
and uh, that's to restrict the airflow into the engine. They're automatically controlled and uh, they will start slowing the air down as we speed up to make sure that uh, the engines produce maximum power. And right there we can see engines 1 and 2, the uh, intakes um, have now moved, uh, the ramps have come down. And that's pretty typical on the real car board that they moved at different times. So this is rather well simulated in flight simulator. Okay, so we're about to go through Mach 1.7, and you'll see here that we're just hitting that uh, that mark right now, and that's the point in which we turn off our reheats. So we're going to turn them off in pairs. You'll see down here we turn them off. Those are the first two and the second two. The reason we turn them off in pairs is just for passenger comfort, which doesn't make really a lot of sense on the uh, flight sim, but we do it anyway. Uh, and I've started a timer to time how long we had those reheats on, and we had them on for just under eight minutes. I'll stop that now. And the reason we had that timer going is the maximum we're allowed to have our reheats on is for 15 minutes. So the next thing we have to do is we have to set our AFCS, our automatic flight control system, where we turn on our uh, auto throttle and prime it for our final cruise speed of Mach 2 but I will do that a little later because I find sometimes flight simulator is somewhat wonky on that setting. The next thing we have to do is take a look at our fuel and um, our fuel transfer is not quite complete yet. Uh, it'll be complete uh, closer to 59 and uh, I'll come back uh, when we get to that point in the flight. Okay, so we've reached a couple of milestones here that we need to take care of. Number one is we're at 1.97, uh, Mach 1.97, uh, 1.98 now. So we're going to prime the throttle so that it'll automatically keep the aircraft at Mach 2. Uh, I should technically do it earlier, but Flight Simulator just doesn't behave nicely when I do it earlier. It tends to um, move the throttles back and forth and drive me insane, so I tend to do it at 1.97, 1.98 and it looks like we're about to go to 2 any second and you'll see as we do max cruise will come on to indicate that we've reached our cruising speed and there we go we've got mock hold at 2 and mock uh, and the and the max cruise is uh, is lit up so this will stay this way now uh, for the duration of our cruise we've also gone over 50,000 feet so we need to change our flight engine rating to cruise and then the other thing that's happened is we've now reached the milestone of going through um, waypoint 9 to waypoint 1 which is actually the point where we re need to reload um, our the next segment of our flight plan so I'll hit the remote buttons and we'll load up section 21 um, technically we should do it uh, with all three units although I think uh, I'm a little unsure as to whether uh, this third unit actually works um, or is needed but anyway we'll load up the flight it's now reading it and once it's done I'm just going to go through my checks to make sure that it's loaded properly so I can remove the remotes now they should all be loaded in and if I go to my distance here wait for change uh, 1 to 2 should be says 345 and that's what my flight plan says the next one should be 114 so that is correct and then it should be 431 402 and 259 what happened there 289 oh okay um, yeah that's correct 389 I looked at the wrong part of my flight plan and that's where we have to load the next segment so that's uh, that's all correct um, 9 to 1 I can insert that and off we go uh, now I'll just quickly take a look at the fuel, see where we are with the fuel. You can see our CG's gone up to 58.7 now. The wing tanks are starting to empty, this is the wing tips. And you can see here engines 1 and 4 are moving down as we continue with our aft trim. I'm going to keep an eye on tanks 5 and 7 because as soon as these guys get low I'll need to flip on 6 and 8. And of course when these get low I'll turn them off. So. That's it. I'll sit back and have a beer for the rest of the cruise now. And here at Mark, Mark 2, um, you can see the spill doors are all the way down. Uh, what they're doing is creating a shock wave for the air entering the engine and slowing it down to about 500 miles an hour. 
that's coming in at Mach 2 and that way the engine can process the air efficiently and produce the power to keep uh, Concorde at uh, Mach 2. Well I just couldn't resist throwing in the shot. This is a shot from uh, the passenger cabin looking at the screens indicating the uh, the speed and altitude and temperature distance to go. Uh, whenever you watch a uh, Concorde video with the real crew they always mention that uh, right about now the passengers are comfortably sitting enjoying caviar and champagne so uh, our virtual passengers are doing the same thing at this point. Okay well it's time now to do our DME update on our INS unit. The INS unit, once it's in navigation mode, begins to lose accuracy over time, uh, approximately three miles per hour. Uh, so um, over a four-hour flight, that's uh, 12 miles off course, something we definitely do not want to have happen. So what we do is we tune our INS into a ground navigation station, a VOR that we know, and um, it realigns itself and improves the accuracy back to kind of its original state. So right now what I'm doing is I've right clicked on 7 and 9 on INS unit number 2. I've tuned in the St. John's VOR on my NAV2 radio and now what I've done is in waypoint number 1 I have um, put in the coordinates of the St. John's VOR the GPS coordinates and now I'm just going waypoint one insert it searches for it and there it finds it and now it is updating all of the INS units and will do so as long as we are tuned into that uh, VOR station so if I turn it now to um, STS it shows us the status of our units and uh, it shows the accuracy and continues to move it to, to the most accurate um, alignment that it can. So uh, that's the DME updating. We'll be doing that throughout uh, our flight. Obviously we can't do that as we cross the ocean, but uh, on either end we'll be uh, going through our DME updates to make sure our navigation is as accurate as we can possibly make it. Okay, so we're at the point now where tank 7 is empty, tank 5 is about to go empty, so I'm going to turn on tanks 6 and tank 8 but you'll notice that there's a discrepancy. We have 12,940 kilos in tank 8 and tank 11 has 11,680 and 280 so 11,800 uh, let's see what is that 1100 11,800 or 11,900 so we've got um, 900 pounds more 900 kilos more here than here and the aircraft will be off balance. So we have to move fuel from tank 8 over to tank 5. So the way we do that is we open up this uh, little guy here which is our uh, jettison valves. We will open up uh, jettison number 3. We'll open the main inlet so fuel from tank 8 will be jettisoned into tank 11. We'll open up the hydraulic pump here and we'll pump it up and we'll open up the inlet here into tank 5. So we should now start to see fuel going into tank 5 and coming out of tank 8 if I did this right. And we can see that fuel isn't exactly flowing in here because it's still using fuel, but fuel is slowly moving in and fuel is slowly moving out there. So we're going to look for a balance which to me looks like it'll be around 11,800. So when this side comes down to 11, well actually i got to just watch it I guess, it'll be more like 12,000, but I want to get it close, say within 100 kilos, it doesn't have to be perfect. So on the left side we now have uh, 11,840, on the right side 12,340, so a bit of a way to go. Uh, 
And I guess the other thing I didn't do earlier, but I can turn off our de-air pumps now because we've finished our transfer of fuel. I should have done that earlier. That was an item I missed on the checklist. Okay, we're at 12,180 on this side, and on this side we're at... Uh, looks like uh, 11,960, so we're getting very close now. And we're just about to go to... we're now at uh, 12,000 on the left and basically 12,000 on the right. So I'm now going to close the inlet, close the pump, close the other inlet, and turn off the jettison, close it up. And now we can see turn this off now because this tank is empty, but here we have 12,000 exactly and here we have 11,000, 12,000 exactly. So we're, we're bang on and we bounced out the sides. What we're looking at here is our temperature indicators for the aircraft. We're at uh, Mach 2.0, we're over 50,000 feet. Our uh, ISA temperature is plus 6, which is uh, kind of average and our, um, uh, I'm just getting an indicator here from my British Airways flight to send a position report, so sorry about that. Um, and our total temperature has reached the maximum, 127. So what's going to happen now is the aircraft is going to either have to slow down or decrease in altitude in order to keep the temperature below 127. And if it's unable to keep it below 127, you're going to hear a really annoying dinging noise, a bell just continuously going um, as, the, uh, as the aircraft uh, is unable to maintain the skin temperature that's at its maximum. So that's usually a flight simulator weather problem more than a real world problem, but just something to keep an eye out for. Okay, so we're uh, looking at our INS, we are 94 miles from waypoint 8, and I've calculated that at 44 miles from waypoint 8, that's when we need to begin our deceleration and descent. The flight plan and the charts for Concorde, the real world charts, um, actually talk about a or indicate a distance of 136 miles, but it's uh, just from what I know about this aircraft in flight simulator needs a lot more space uh, to complete the deceleration and descent and we have to be at Mach 1 or below Mach 1 55 miles from the weight the Matum intersection so we're going to start our descent 44 miles from uh, waypoint number 8 um, you'll also notice that we're not at 60,000 feet and that's pretty common in Concorde that you don't actually achieve 60,000 on every flight. So we'll go through our checklist now, uh, deceleration and descent checklist. The warning and landing display uh, is checked. Briefing, uh, I did that on my own, so that has been stated. The alt safety altitude is checked. The ASI bugs are set. Actually, my um, landing bug here needs to be changed, and I'll do that uh, before we land. Uh, the altimeters are set and cross-checked, and the radio decision, radio altimeter decision height has been set. So now we're just waiting for the um, deceleration point, which is 44 miles from waypoint number 8. So to get ready for that, I'll bring up our engine control uh, panel. And the first thing we're going to do is actually... Um, actually, before I do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just uh, hold our our altitude now at 58,900 feet. Uh, that's the maximum we'll achieve. We're going to lower our um, we're going to lower our uh, altitude target to 37,000 feet. And now we're just waiting <coughs> for a few more moments until we hit uh, 44 miles, and we can begin our deceleration uh, part of the flight. So the first thing we do is we decelerate, and then we descend. So 49, 8. 7, 6, 5, and we're at the deceleration point, so the first thing we do is we open our engine recirculation fan, so that will uh, help cool the engines. Uh, the next thing we do is we take off our automatic uh, our auto throttle, and we reduce our 
thrust to the 18% TLA mark and you'll see the engine start to pull back uh, to about 94% N2 and uh, then we're going to go to our fuel panel and make sure that our um, tanks are on normal and our tanks are now switched to normal the hydraulic pumps on tank 11 will turn those off and we can begin to move our fuel transfer forward we have to monitor that because sometimes it gets to the forward bug a little too quickly you'll see our speed starting to come down um, and as it hits 360 knots we're going to hit our vertical speed and and have our aircraft descend at approximately 800 feet per minute you can see it's sort of dropping a bit here it shouldn't be but it does that sometimes so probably around three just a little more than 360 I'll hit the um, hit the uh, alt acquire button we can do that now <coughs> and you'll see we start to descend now at 800 feet a minute and now what we're waiting for is 350 and at 350 I'll hit ISA hold and we will just descend now at um, 350 knots and we take that speed all the way down to 10,000 feet unless we are required by ATC or some other uh, technical reason uh, to descend at a slower rate. So now there we go we've uh, just got one more thing to do we have to change our flight rating now to climb and our deceleration and descent checklist is now complete and we're going to descend all the way down to 37,000 feet at uh, approximately 350 knots uh, with uh, a number of checks as well along the way. All right we're at the point now where our um, speed is descending down to one point Mach 1.5 and as that happens the engineer will now reduce our throttles to a TLA of 32 percent which will drop our engines down to an N2 of 77 percent and that will increase our rate of descent uh, as all the way down to Mach 1 and as we break the speed of sound and slow down further I'll reduce manually reduce the uh, throttles down to idle okay so now we're reaching a speed of Mach 1.3 and what we need to do is check our intakes so I'm um, just checking that the uh, spill ramps um, on the intakes are modulating and they've modulated uh, down to zero so they've opened back up now to allow air uh, into through the engines uh, and to properly supply them with enough air okay so now we're uh, heading close to our altitude of 37,000 feet I've engaged the uh, the auto throttle so it holds our speed and we have to be at uh, below Mach 1 uh, below the speed of sound 50 nautical miles from waypoint number 1 which is MITAM so we've actually calculated that uh, correctly and um, <coughs> I'm actually going to further slow the aircraft down by doing an IAS acquire and having it acquire speed of around 340 knots I think will probably be or maybe 330 is probably going to be the right number just to have it at about 0.95 and you can see now we're just going through the speed of sound I'd stop the uh, I'd stop the fuel flow back but I've started to back up again a little while ago uh, it was getting too close to the forward um, limit so I stopped it and I've started to back up again I'm a little bit behind but I'll stop it now probably at about 56 at 37,000 feet until we begin our further descent into uh, London okay as we uh, decelerate through uh, Mach 1 we need to go through our Mach 1 checklist uh, throttles are set as required we need to uh, add some of our heaters back on so our pressure static heaters we'll turn those on our transparency and demist we're turning those on our throttle masters will need to get switched to the other selection and we've uh, also we're checking that our pressurization pressurization is set we're moving that back down to uh, from five down to zero 
And with that, our deceleration checklist at Mach 1 is complete. Okay, we're at the next part of our deceleration now. Uh, uh, sorry, our descent now. We have to descend down to Occam, VOR at 8,000 feet. So I've selected Occam, and now I'm just going to uh, put the uh, IAS hold um, so it'll begin our descent, and I'm going to reduce our throttles down to idle. And that'll uh, have us holding the speed of 330 knots down to Occam and uh, I also have to move our fuel forward for the remainder of the, the transfer. Alright, our fuel transfer has now completed so we're going to turn off the pumps and turn off our transfer and this whole... Um, actually I can turn these guys on which I forgot to do. Uh, tanks 5 and 7 will feed tanks 1 and 4 so we won't get a low fuel warning and a starve out on the engine and now uh, we're all done with our fuel transfer. Under control speed red Concorde 2 uh, we're at six, uh, flight level 160 uh, descending 7000 at Occam. Speed red Concorde 2 level Occam. Roger descend uh, flight level 90 level Occam speed red Concorde 2. The arrival tonight into London will be the Occam 2 Foxtrot uh, arrival, uh, starting at Bedeck and working our way over to the Occam VOR. I'm expecting Occam anywhere between seven and 9,000 feet, depending on uh, how air traffic control handles the flow of traffic into Heathrow tonight. Uh, with regard to the arrival runway, I'm planning runway 09 or right. That's what the indication is um, at the moment. We may get switched up, so I'll have the chart up for 9 left as well. All right, well, we're approaching Occam and descending uh, to be at Occam for 9 or 1000. And it's time now for our approach checklist. Uh, the cabin crew has been called. The landing briefing has been updated. Uh, we'll turn on our taxi uh, turn-off lights and our landing lights. They are on. The rad INS switches are all on radio. Seatbelt signs, they are on. The engine rating is takeoff. Brake fans are off. The engine recirculation valves are off. Secondary air doors are auto. Engine control schedule is on approach. The engine feed pumps, they are all on. The nose and visor down five degrees. So the rest of the checklist has to do with an auto landing. We're doing a we're doing a uh, manual landing today so no need to go through the rest of the checklist so our approach checklist is now complete speed of Concord 2 on that heading 270 your speed is 220 knots turn to 4000 QNH 107 character fast cars Roger, turning left 270, reducing speed 220 knot, descend 4000 and uh, QNH 1027, speed break Concord 2. The two turn right heading 6 part of the grease to stop the foot of the zero nine right when established the descent of the path. Right six uh, zero six five degrees till established on the localizer zero nine or right and uh, descent of the glide path, Beaver Concord 2.
As we fly the aircraft on our final approach, we're going to be maintaining a speed of between 180 and 190 knots, all the way down to about 1,000 feet or 800 feet, and then slowly start pulling the speed back to our VREF speed, which in this case is around 165 knots. We go to the land on Brazil on the right, the southern stand is the final of zero degrees on zero. Clear to land zero nine or right, Speaker Concord 2. Copy the winds. Landing checklist landing gear down, four greens. Nose down and green. Brakes checked and normal. Anti skid is checked. 1,000 feet radio. The auxiliary inlet MIs are open. Yellow system has been checked. The landing checklist is complete. 800 feet. Just looking at our clock, I can see our flight time was 3 hours and 22 minutes, which is excellent given our estimated flight time was 3 hours and 16 minutes, so we're just a few minutes behind schedule. Okay, we've just been given our clearance to taxi to the gate, but I'm just going to stop here first so we can go through our after landing checklist. Our brake fans will be turned on. The master warning we will inhibit. I'm just going to turn off the landing lights and turn on our taxi light. Flight control inverters are off. We're going to turn the ramp spill master switches to manual. The reverse ASOVs, I'm just going to skip that. We did that at the beginning. It's the same procedure. Uh, the inboard engines, we're going to turn those off. That just allows us to taxi with a bit more control because we have less power. 
Auto ignition is off. We'll turn off all our heaters. Pressure static heater off. ADS and standby heaters off. And then our uh, visor uh, demist and heaters will be off. Uh, we can also turn the drain masters off. The temperature is warm enough. Transponder moved to standby. We'll just check the pressurization. That looks good. And now we need to turn our secondary air doors off. The next part of the checklist is we have to adjust our fuel. We have to move 4,000 kilos into the front tank number 9. That's just to balance the aircraft so that uh, there's enough weight on the front to stop it from tipping up in the air because it's uh, too heavy in the back. So we're just going to close the inlets for tanks 5 and 7. We'll close the inlets for tank 11 and then we'll open the jettison valves and also open the inlets for tank 9 and that'll move fuel up into tank 9 and we'll just check that as we uh, taxi to our gate Now we're nearing uh, 4,000 kilos, so I'm just going to close the jettison valves and reset all the other uh, valves to their normal position. So we're just turning into gate 421 and we'll begin our parking checklist. Okay, so the marshal has told us to stop. We have our parking brakes on. Lights and transparencies off. Now uh, we've turned off engine number one. We have one engine going, number four, so now we can ask for ground power. If you try to ask for ground power with two engines going, or more than one engine going, it won't work. So make sure you shut down three of the engines before you go ahead and ask for the ground power. So now if we go to our electrics panel we can see that the ground power available light is lit. We can switch to ground power now and turn off our last HP valve to shut down engine number four. Turning off the seatbelt sign. We're turning our auto throttles to off and our throttle masters to off.
So the only thing left to do now is just turn off our batteries and uh, move our INS units to standby and we will have completed our parking checklist. So that's basically it. Uh, our flight's over. There is a stopover checklist and a flight engineer's panel check for shutting down everything and removing all power. I'm just going to skip that. It's fairly straightforward. You just turn off the few remaining items that are supplying power and turn the INSs completely off and that's it. The aircraft is then parked and secured. Congratulations if you made it all the way through the video. I apologize if it was a little boring at times, but certainly this video indicates how complex and how interesting it is to fly the Flight Sim Labs Concorde X where almost every button, every switch and every procedure is simulated from the real world Concorde. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes into every flight and uh, certainly it's uh, something that keeps you very busy and it's incredibly rewarding once you're able to successfully fly the aircraft from point A to point B. So again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in my uh, YouTube uh, channel, and I'll uh, do my best to answer everything, if I can. Thank you. Bye-bye.